Hello, my friend. Hello. Hello, my friend. Hello. I know I've seen you around. You know I had to go. Hello, my friend. Hello. If you're looking for any answers, there are none to find. Because the one who looks for answers is the one who will always be searching. Who is the seeker? One who believes there is something to find. and there's nothing to follow. There's nothing to run from. There's nothing to run to. None of this is real. What do I mean when I say none of this is real? Well, there are different levels on which one may be willing to accept that truth. A friend of mine many, many years ago told me that pain is all in your mind. That pain has no true power. And I was just... I, 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 the little I was so offended by that. How could you say such a thing? My pain is real. Don't take my pain from me. You Don't tell me my, my, my pain experience is all in my head. <sighs> years and years later, now I understand what my friend was saying. None of this is real. Your pain isn't real. It can be seen through. We can see it all around us anytime we call something bullshit, right? Anytime we see through another's ego, anytime we see through another's political belief system, anytime we see through someone, we understand that none of this is real, right? Occasionally we see through ourselves. Who is seeing through ourselves? There is a deeper presence in us. There is a deeper being. There is a self with a capital S. There is an I with a capital I. There is the I am, the isness, the suchness. That which sees through the illusion. But we get on these big, ego trips where we're running around trying to fix ourselves and fix everybody else and fix everything. We can do that in the name of goodness, in the name of love. We can sacrifice ourselves hoping to find love. We can look to others hoping to find our own happiness. We can run away from others, hoping to find our happiness. Who is that that's doing all the running? Who is it that needs something to be added to themselves to feel better about themselves? Who is it that needs self-esteem? Who is it that tells the story of, I'm better than you, I know more than you. Who, who is that? It's not me. And it's not you.
none of this is real. What about the financial system that we created? What about the governmental systems that fail to care for us or fail to keep us in line? What about the nations we invented and the borders? Is any of that real? If you choose to make it real for yourself, if, if that's the worldview that you choose to inhabit and you want it to be real, then it seems very, very real. And my point is not to deconstruct your, um, your worldview because you're not listening to me right now if, if you're threatened by this, right? The only possible way that you're listening to me right now is if you already know these things to be true and you're, and, and you're seeing yourself in me somehow. That's who's listening. Let's be honest, right? There's just a very, very few people. And that's okay. Because it's about slow. It's about small. It's about patience. It's about grassroots, right? It's about the individual waking up realizing they are no individual at all. Because awakening does not happen in a corporation, right? Because the corporation doesn't benefit from our awakening, right? You see through that. We all see through that. So... What are we doing here right now? We are just reaffirming the truth. I watch my own videos to remind myself because I have these moments of sanity where I see and I understand. And then, and then I'll have these ego trips. And I know I'm in an ego trip because I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. There's no relief. I'm unhappy, and I think I need to be somewhere else, with someone else, or I think I need to be someone else. And uh, that's just not true. There's a reason why the Christ asked those men to drop their nets. Because when you drop your nets, you have to deal with a lot of ego stuff. <laughs> when you start following someone around the countryside who opens up your consciousness to see yourself and others in a whole new way, there's a lot that comes into question around that journey, right? Who are you following? There's no one to follow. There's no story that's sufficient. There's no religion. There's no theology that will take you all the way. And that's what the Christ showed us, is that we leave form behind. He showed us that as he left the form of his body behind and he had that talk with Peter and he was like hey bud you know I love you but by the time the rooster crows in the morning you will have betrayed me three times oh no 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 I would never I would never I would never betray you it's okay it's okay you just can't understand because I'm gonna show you how to leave form behind with forgiveness and I'm gonna show you what it's like to be resurrected you know what? You don't have to believe that story. Stories are what they are. They are poetry. They are the archetypes, right? They are, they are in our collective mind. They are in our one mind to show us the way. 
right? It's not about believing in the name of Jesus and joining a special club. It's about choosing forgiveness. It's about choosing forgiveness from one moment to the next. And the freedom and the clarity that choosing forgiveness brings to our being. Choosing forgiveness is how we see through the illusion. The illusion seems to have substance because it seems so unjust and we see so clearly and we are so right. We're seeing through the illusion already. Seeing through the illusion is really no problem. Every time we call bullshit, right? We're, we're seeing through the illusion. It's no problem. But forgiving the illusion, now that takes a trained mind, right? It's a choice. We have choice. What are the promises that come with that choice? Perfect happiness. I can describe to you my experience. What it's like right now to move through form what it's like right now for others to not understand what the hell it is that I'm doing with my life, yet to have a sense of purpose like never before. The purpose being this, is to simply communicate to you what this is like. I'm, I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm not trying to, I'm not asking you for money right now. I'm not asking you to do anything for me. I'm not asking you to believe in me or to believe in my message. I'm just simply sharing because this is the most profound experience of my entire existence. <laughs> I have searched and searched and searched. Who was searching? Ah. Oh. The desperate one was searching and searching and searching and fixing and fixing and fixing and practicing and practicing and meditating and meditating and abstaining, 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 indulging, indulging, indulging. Where's the answer? And I was told many years ago that now that I believed in the name of Jesus that I had found the answer and I could stop searching. And oh God, in my early 20s, how, how, how I hoped that was true. I, I wanted to stop searching. I did, I, I promise. <laughs> but there was a lot of myself that I had to get over. There was a lot of unforgiveness. There was a lot of hurt. Who was hurting? That part of me that believed my story was true. That part of me that would rather choose being right over being happy. The part of me who felt that the answer was outside of himself. That's the one who searches, right? Is the one who feels the answer is outside. But I think the Christ pointed us inward, right? I think he asked us to examine ourselves when he said, hey, maybe you didn't have sex with your neighbor's wife, but did you want to? Not that having sex with your neighbor's wife is like some kind of, you know, uh, something that's going to send you to hell. You know, it's just, it's just an inquiry process, right? Take a look at what's going on inside. What kind of false idols are we worshiping? Right now, we're worshiping at the idol of at the altar of self, 
We are addicted to self. We are consuming, consuming, consuming the outer world, living in this world in a way that is not sustainable and unable to fix it, despite our homo sapien mind. Despite that wise mind, right? Despite the rational ascent that we have made over the past four or five hundred years with science, right? We are still suffering, suffering, suffering. Who is suffering? Who is suffering? That inauthentic disingenuous self who is incapable of love. That critical mind, it, that mind that is stuck in one spot, right? Cosmic consciousness. This is the consciousness that in which we are elevated or deepened, whichever way you prefer the story to go. We use elevated right now because there is this position from which we can view everything going on. And it's very vague. I mean, maybe because we're so high up, you know, it's just like, oh, I see it. Suffering. Huh. Suffering. I, I know that's suffering. Different face, but it's all the details. Some of us invest so much time every day into the details of suffering, so much so that it just causes our own suffering, right? It makes us angry. How often is that going on? But yes, there is this, there is this state of consciousness where we are elevated above it all, yet not looking down in a critical way. We're elevated above it all, yet compassionately observing like a father make it the great mother if you want it doesn't matter we are not touched by the insanity yet we see the insanity and we have compassion for it and actually we're seeing through the insanity and we're saying to our children it's okay it's okay I love you I see that you're hurting. Come home. Come home. Come home. But you know, the ego does not want an answer. The ego is not looking for a solution because all the ego wants is to believe it's real. It's going to keep running and running and running around in circles. And as soon as it solves a problem, it's going to fret about the three other problems that were created in the solving. It never stops. It never stops. So waking up in a moment is like this. None of this is real. Or we, we accept, we understand that we understand the falseness of that insane search. And the true self relieves us of that search, relieves us of that suffering. And it's just like when you listen to, maybe, maybe you've listened to Eckhart Tolle or what's his name, Rupert Spira or uh, any of the, you know, Muji or Sadhguru. It seems that these people are we're just all asking making an invitation just just to just to see through the illusion right it's it's the same message i remember it came a big piece of it came to me through Eckhart Tolle when he said whenever you are disturbed, it's because of your ego. And I was like, oh, that's an absolute, oh, I know that. But I was suffering so deeply that I was willing to let that come in in a moment. Whenever you're disturbed, it's ego. Tolle says, says that, um, you know, an awakened one 
doesn't argue because there is no argument. What, what, what's to argue about? What's to argue? Opinions and judgments? Proof? See, that's, that's the stuff that's causing the problems, right? And I think it's apparent right now that um, we are in over our heads, my friend. We are in over our heads. And as soon as we're ready, we're going to wake up. There's no rush. There's no rush. Because there is no time. There is not space like we think there is. That's why the spin of an electron on one side of the universe can affect the spin of an electron on the other side of the universe faster than the speed of light. Oh, that's what Einstein called spooky action, right? Because he just didn't want it to be so, but it is so. Uh, space is what? No, oh, it can't go faster than the speed. Nothing can be communicated faster than the speed of light. Yet, somehow, shit. Quantum physics broke the shit down for us. Nothing is as solid as we thought it was. <laughs> and the cause and effect of Newtonian physics just didn't work anymore, right? Because things can move through other things as if they had never touched. And one thing can spin in one direction and the other direction simultaneously. Oh, no. And maybe all that stuff is meaningless to you, but I doubt it if you've listened to this video for 22 minutes. I mean, we're just friends, right? This is just a friendly outreach. That's all I'm doing. Just a friendly outreach. Hello, we're awake. Hello, there is no I, there is no you, there is only we, and we are one. I love that. There's one message, there's one message of freedom, one message of hope. And we're all breathing into it. We're all here together. And as we forgive those others, we are forgiving ourselves. There are these practices, you know, you learn in uh, like Buddhist material. I learned from Pema. What does she call that practice? The, um, I think it's a Tonkin med meditation where you breathe in the other's pain and you breathe out their healing. You consciously, you choose to find someone who's hard, who's difficult for your mind to work with. Choose somebody. You can choose somebody that's hard to work with. See them in your heart. See their suffering. See yourself in them. Choose to forgive. Experiment. See what it does in your heart. I don't need to be telling you these things. I'm no teacher. <laughs> You're the teacher, right? But maybe you're still watching, and that makes me happy. If not, that's fine too, because I need to hear this stuff, you know? Because <laughs> I'm right there with you, my friend. We're right here together, and I think that's what time it is, is to be right here together. We, we don't really need like some kind of pyramid, some kind of hierarchy of teachers. What we really need is to wake up together to witness one another, to rejoice in each other's awakening process. I release myself. I forgive myself for all the egos I disappointed, for everything that my ego was not capable of being. I make no justifications. I make no attack. I have no defense. I think the Bible would call that having no righteousness of one's own, receiving the free gift of a righteousness. 
I, I, I talk about the Christ in, in the Bible, I guess, because, I mean, that's that's kind of where my first conscious spiritual experience started, you know? So it was it was kind of my context for so much. And then I, I branched out. I went on a lot of different healing paths, worked many different programs, tried many different practices. And I, and I think that's beautiful because that's kind of what brings us into a cosmic con- consciousness. I was gaining context, right? Because it appears to be a process. I've heard somebody say that it's like that because if you were to wake up all at once, you're, you know, you just wouldn't be able to handle it. Your body wouldn't be able to handle it. Your mind wouldn't be able to handle it. So it seems like a process, but it's all already done. The choice is made. And we get to participate or at least feel like we're participating. I love you. I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy. I love you so much. I love you the same today as I did yesterday, as I did the day before, and as I will tomorrow. It's only the false in me that changes. And if the false in me must disappoint others as it passes away, so be it. And I think that's the lesson of dropping the nets. There's a business partner you're going to disappoint. There's a family you're going to disappoint. But if when the false narrative crumbles and you begin to see it for what it truly is that freedom is not something that even can be looked away from you can't forget it if you if you want to it's like the men who followed the Christ, the women who followed the Christ, um, they simply saw themselves in him. They simply saw themselves awake when they were with him and they needed to go. They needed to make that journey. Here we are. Talking about the same thing that we were talking about yesterday. Release and forgive. We make that choice. We experience the freedom of it. (laughs) And it's the most gorgeous (laughs) experience. To be, just to be. Be with me. We are of one mind. There is no separation between you and I. 